Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we are talking all about warm and cool colors. So we're diving a little bit into color theory and I'm gonna tell you about why you need to know what these are, how to identify them, and all that stuff that may be confusing, but I'm gonna try and make it really simple. So let's hope I do that. <laughs> let's jump right into the video. Okay, so today we are talking all about warm versus cool colors. Now your first question is, why do I need to know this? And if you've ever tried mixing a purple with red and blue and gotten this, you know, muddy kind of brown color, this is why it's important to know. So before we head into all of that, we just wanna do a quick recap of the color wheel and just a little bit of color theory because if you don't know this stuff, it's super important to know. And if you already do, you can skip ahead. But let's start with our color wheel. So I suggest everyone makes their own color wheel and just has it on their desk handy to look at as a reference. Eventually over time, it will become second nature and you'll know all of this. But if you're just beginning and you need to know how to mix colors, it's really handy to have one. So you can just go on to Google and copy any that they have there, but these are mine. So I have two color wheels here, and my first color wheel shows the primary colors, blue, yellow, and red. And the colors in between those are secondary colors. Basically a secondary color is when you mix two primary colors together to get their baby, which is a secondary color. So blue and red make purple, red and yellow make orange, and yellow and blue make green. Okay, so we have our primary colors and our secondary colors. On this wheel here, we have something called tertiary colors. Now tertiary colors are the colors you get when you mix a primary color with a secondary color. So here you can see we mixed blue, which is a primary color, and green to get this blue green. Here you mix green and yellow and you get a yellow green yellow and orange, you get this yellow orange, basically just as it sounds. Okay, so then the next thing to know is contrasting or complementary colors. Now this comes in really handy when mixing colors because if you mix the wrong combinations, you can get a brown. So contrasting or complementary colors, as they're well known, are the colors that sit directly across from each other on the color wheel. So you have red and green, blue and orange, and yellow and purple. And those combinations mixed together make shades of brown. So this is good to know for our warm and cool color mixing test. Okay, so there's our little throwback to the basics. Now we're gonna talk about warm and cool colors. So let's look at this color wheel. The cool colors are the ones at the top, green, blue, and purple. When you think cool colors, think of more earthy or water color tones. And then our warm colors are kind of like, think of the sun, so you get red, orange, and yellow, okay? Warm and cool colors. Now that seems easy enough, right? Except that almost every single one of these colors has either a warm or cool version of it. So you walk into a, an art store and you see all these paints. You see five different types of green and like all these shades of blue and different colors of red and you're like, well, which ones do I buy? How do I know which ones will mix well? Well, you're gonna have to identify which ones are cool colors and which ones are warm colors. And the only way to do this, unfortunately, is either Google it or <laughs> lay these colors down beside each other to identify whether they're a cool green or a warm green. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. So I have two greens here. These are my two go-to greens. And I have sap green. And with different brands, they might go by different names. But I have a sap green here. And then I have a hooker's green here. So this is helpful to identify them if you have, say, like a pre-made palette. Um, and you have different shades of all these colors. And you just want to know if they're cool or warmer colors. But if you're just buying individual tubes... I will link in the description below um, some of the paints that I use, the cool tones and the warm tones of it. So you don't have to guess or do this. But if you have already preset made palette and you just wanna identify which ones are the best for mixing, this will help. So you lay them down next to each other and you can definitely see a difference. One's darker, one's lighter. One has a bit more yellow to it. So if you're trying to identify 
if your color is warm or cool, take your little color wheel here. Here's our green. Now, if a color is leaning more towards yellow, it's gonna be a warmer color. So this green is a bit more of a yellowy green, right? You can definitely see the difference. And yellow is a warm color, so this would be a warm green. This one, while you don't see too much of a blue undertone, it's definitely darker and it's definitely more blue than yellow. So that would be a cool green. Now that's really handy when mixing, um, like when I do my eucalyptus color. So I'll show you. When I mix a eucalyptus color, I always use my hooker's green dark and purple. So I'll just show you here. I'm gonna take my hooker's green, take my dioxazine purple, which is a nice dark purple, and you get this really beautiful, rich green. And then also, if you lighten it up quite a bit, it almost has this bluish undertone to it, which is perfect for painting a eucalyptus. And there you can clearly see it is way more blue. Now, if I were to mix this sap green with the dioxazine purple, remember this green has an undertone of yellow to it. Yellow is a contrasting color to purple, which makes brown if you mix the two. So let's see what happens when we mix a bit of sap green that has this yellow undertone and purple. Now, you can definitely see it makes more of an olivey brown green, which is also great for some greenery, but it does definitely has that brown undertone to it, okay? So you just wanna keep in mind if you're mixing something, think of that undertone that it has to it. This has an undertone of yellow and we're mixing it with purple, which is a contrasting color. You're gonna get some sort of shade of brown and that's really helpful if you're trying to mix, you know, browns or something that has a brown undertone. So it's good to have. So next I'm gonna show you the one that I'm sure everyone struggles with at some point or another, that is mixing the most perfect purple. And I'm sure you've done it where you grab what is called cadmium red, which is this one right here, okay? And it looks pretty orange, right? So let's actually put it in our palette. We wanna mix this purple and you buy a tube of cadmium red. It says red on the tube. You wanna mix a purple, you grab this blue and you mix it and it comes out brown and you're like, what the heck? The color wheel is lying to me. Well, <laughs> cadmium red, is actually a very orange, warm red. And when mixing a purple, you want a cool red. So let's lay down our reds that we have. So I have this alizarin, I feel like that's how you say it. I keep pronouncing it wrong. Alizarin red, which is a nice, dark, deep red, okay? It still has that undertone of orange, but it's a lot more on the purpley side rather than this cadmium red, okay? This one just looks like straight up orange, but this is actually cadmium orange. Let's, this is, I think is Windsor red. So this is a bit better than the cadmium orange, okay? And now you want to pick the one that is leaning the closest to purple, okay? Because if you go orange and you mix an orange tone with a blue, you're gonna get a brown purple. So you wanna pick the one that is closest to purple. And because purple is a darker color, if you're stuck, just pick the one that's the darkest in my opinion, okay? So that would be the alizarin red. Um, and then for blues, blues also have different shades or tones, okay? You get, here is this ultramarine blue. Which one's this? This might be Prussian blue. No, I think that one's indigo. You have turquoise, okay? All these different types of blue and you're like, what blue do I mix to make purple? The most, the best color to mix purple, in my opinion, the warmest blue that we have is ultramarine, okay? So you wanna find a good ultramarine and a deep red to mix purple. So let me show you what that will look like. So let's take our alizarin red and our ultramarine it was this one <laughs> a little bit more of that red and you get 
a decent purple, right? That's a pretty nice purple. Let's try the Windsor Red, which is the second deepest red that we have here. But it's a bit more orangey. Grab some of that ultramarine. Hmm, a bit more blue maybe. And as you can see, it's still purple, but not as vibrant. Now I'm gonna tell you exactly how to mix a beautiful purple, not using red at all. You're gonna use pink. Pink is a variation of red. And if you were to actually look at a real color wheel, the real primary colors are magenta, cyan, which is a nice like light blue and yellow. Red is actually a mix of magenta and yellow. So you have that yellow undertone, yellow and purple make brown. That's why it's so hard to mix a beautiful purple. So my advice is if you're purchasing colors, get a pink. So here I have permanent rose. Okay, this will always be the easiest way to mix a nice purple, permanent rose, and this will actually mix well with almost any blue. Okay, so let's take turquoise for now. Let's get it. Yeah, I'm, there we go. Turquoise, look at how bright that purple is, okay? So when in doubt, purchase a pink. So I am going to link below the colors that if you're just starting out with, um, that you should get. Just they're a good starter color. You're going to want some sort of pink, a nice deep red, maybe some cool or, you know, warm greens. I'm going to give you the lowdown in the description of good colors to start with, but that's kind of the basics of it. So there is some insight into the difference between warm and cool colors and how you can mix them and why they're so important to know. I really hope that was clear and easy to understand. If you have any questions, please let me know in the link, in the link. Please let me know in the comments below and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you all so much for watching my video. I really hope you liked it and I hope you learned something. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and follow me on Instagram and Facebook for even more. Have a great day guys, bye.